Welcome everyone to 7 Minutes or Less, talking about the shows you love or want to get into. Today, we will be talking about 24, Season 3. A year and a half later, after the events of Season 1, a bigger terrorist threat is underway. Nina Myers, who was revealed to be a mole in the first season, planted her seed of chaos by selling CTU schematics and other information to highest bidders. A group who took this information happens to have a link with Jack, which CTU needs him to reestablish his cover, and discover a link between them and the terrorist cell called Second Wave, who have smuggled a nuclear bomb into the US. Second Wave was closely monitored by a covert special ops unit that was supposed to stop the nuke from going off at the 11th hour, but that never happened. The unit was sanctioned and approved by Roger Stanton, who just so happens to be a part of President David Palmer's team to find the bomb. Behind Stanton, with an axe to grind, was Sherry, who was angry at David for cutting her out after the events of season one. Kate and Marie Warner's storyline takes a surprising turn when in actuality Marie is the surprising affiliate to Second Wave. At some point in this day, Kate and Jack's path cross and they help each other to get closer to finding the bomb. Jack survives by the skin of his teeth each time he gets close to death. One story element that is really good is involving George Mason. Exposed to radiation poisoning earlier on in the day, he sneaks aboard the plane Jack is flying and takes over after having a heartfelt conversation with Jack. Jack uncovers the bad guys, thwarts their plans, and gets to reunite with Kim. Just as the 24th hour comes to a close, David's life is attempted on once again, and when he collapses, we listen to his labored breath as he struggles to stay alive. For those of you who want to know how Season 3 is on the level, it's a good season. It's easy to say that you will be captivated from the first minute to the last. A few nitpicks I have boiled down to computer tech babble, which is occasionally distracting, some melodrama that brings the personalities to the forefront, which can bring an eye roll or two, but nevertheless, this is a well thought out season that has some shocking, satisfying, and even dark situations that lead to untimely demises. Ultimately, this is a good, completing trilogy of Jack Bauer and the torment he goes through thwarting terrorist threats. A fictitious virus that has the potential to cause a fast epidemic is brought to CTU's attention. Jack, a head of field ops, and his partner Chase Edmonds are following up on a pardon deal with the district attorney for Ramon Salazar, who is a drug lord with a vast network of terrorist connections. Ramon Salazar and this virus are connected by Hector, Ramon's brother, who releases an audio file demanding that Ramon be released from prison. Otherwise, the virus will be unleashed. On the family side of the events, we follow Kyle Singer, a young kid who is in over his head when he is trying to transport drugs for a quick payday, when his mother and father are in financial hardship. Behind all this is Hector and his girlfriend in northern Mexico dealing with issues of their own while monitoring everything in LA. Hector hopes to get Ramon back while he touches base with a mole in CTU, Gael Hortega, who is working with Hector's group, making sure Kyle stays on task. Alive and well, we have President David Palmer, soon to go up against his opponent, Senator John Keeler, for next term. While David is alerted of the virus, he has more issues to deal with than just worldwide catastrophe. David's new romantic interest gets intermingled with their public and private life, as David's brother Wayne, his new chief of staff, throws in wrenches of his own, forcing David's hand. I always consider the first three seasons to be sort of the misadventures of Jack Bauer, where there's a light connection between events and characters involved. While the terrorist threat is politically renowned and handled by their go-to government agency, the key players either stopping the threat or behind it are usually new players to the game. What connects each season is the characters turned traitors or wild cards. Simply put, the characters with no loyalty or axes to grind have their cards to play in the next season over, but is not overtly the main problem. In this season though, those types of characters have larger roles here and oh boy, do they get what's coming to them. Jack is at the forefront of the actions and unbeknownst to us, even behind the curtain. A lot is orchestrated by him including keeping Kim close, her role is a lot better this season, beating a heroin addiction due to a previous cover that he had to maintain with the Salazars and tries to remain on top of the constantly growing terrorist threat. 
Jack and Kim's relationship gets strained in this season, but not by much. What really affects them is Chase Edmonds dating Kim, which throws a wrench in Jack's partnership with him. And later, Kim and Chase's relationship are affected when a baby in question comes into play when Chloe O'Brien can't keep it away from CTU, distracting certain personnel. Tony and Michelle are married after the events of season two, and they are looking to move on from CTU, but the day's events put a test on their relationship when Tony's involvement in the day is revealed. David's drama notably comes down to ultimatums that forces his hand to play hardball with some powerful people. Things get rather complex with Sherry's down and dirty methods when David calls her in as a personal favor. For the day's events, I actually really enjoy where these characters are at in life and what they have to do throughout the day. They bring about a lot of unique circumstances that keep the plot flowing. Newcomers in this season are in this interesting position. Usually when any show introduces new characters, you're not exactly all that attached to them because you'll believe that they won't last the season. One character that does end up being a series regular from here on out is Chloe O'Brien. If you don't like her in this season, well, let's hope that she grows on you. She's awkward, sarcastic, and blunt. Sometimes a tough pill to swallow. In the end, guys and gals, this is a good installment in the series. New characters, interesting plot, a lot more at stake that create plenty of dark situations, making this season a formidable competitor in the no character is safe in the current shows out today. It's a bit melodramatic for a couple of episodes, and things do wrap up conveniently at times, but this season does end in a way that doesn't quite resolve conveniently. Overall, the last five to six episodes are fast on its feet, down and dirty, and personal for Jack. For all the things that are in this season and big turning points, this is a season you don't want to miss. For that, I highly recommend this season. All right, guys and gals, thank you all so much for watching. If you have seen 24 or if you're interested, let me know down below in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable and let's talk. Don't forget, I have other reviews on this channel. Please go check them out if you're curious. And if you like this and you want to see more, do all the things that help out. Subscribe, comment, and like. Stay tuned for more reviews. And as always, until next time.